Good evening, fellow members and guests. I'm pleased to report to you on Dauphin Cooperative's 2020 operating year. 2020 was the year of COVID. The virus changed the way we operate, the way we meet, the way we say hello to friends. The impact of these changes on the Dauphin Cooperative has been staggering and the load fell on Lorne Effort, our managers, our staff. The board of directors and I wish to thank the co-op for taking on this burden and handling it so well. With every wave of COVID, staff had to make changes in the way we help our shoppers. The changes in the supply of goods sometimes resulted in people looking at shelves that had big holes in them. Suppliers were delayed or some, sometimes suppliers were, were simply weren't making that item anymore to simplify their life. In the end, lines need to be, shelves need to be relined. It was nothing but work. Add to this, sometimes their own people would get a twitch or something and would be required to stay home until the symptoms were deemed to be non-contagious. This resulted in fewer people doing more work. So thank you. We appreciate how hard you worked to make this operation run. I'm happy to report that despite the restricted work environment, the Dauphin Co-op's progress did not slow down. 2020 was a very successful operating year and our net savings grew to over $2.3 million. So this is our local savings. Our net savings, which include the FCL contribution, is over $4.5 million. Now, let's put this in perspective. The total savings of the 98 or so cooperatives that form a federated cooperative amounted to only $27 million. This puts us in a very strong operating position. Where we're making money is only important if we can share it with the greater community. And working with organizations in Dauphin and district is inspiring. We were able to return about $170,000 to local groups to help with their projects. These included uh, Dauphin and District Food Bank, uh, Dauphin Daycare Centers, uh, the food programs in our schools, uh, the Parkland Humane Society, and uh, let's not forget Dolphin Derailers and the Northgate Project. And there were many more. There were many in this. The Dolphin Co-op also never forgets about its ag community. In 2020, we will have spent over half a million dollars on fuel and ammonia delivery equipment alone. The St. Rose Drive Fertilizers Location uh, Depot, uh, the new structure built there, became fully operational in 2020. And that was a $2.6 million addition to the St. Rose community and the St. Rose Ag operation. Dolphin Cooperative is a successful operation, and that's because of one basic reason. We plan for our future. Most purchases are planned for years in advance. Our projects are planned for years in advance. We continually work on five-year plans and on setting objectives. We look for opportunities and because we're financially strong, we can, we can act on them and we take advantage of it. And that results in a better operation for our members. At the same time, we ask our employees, what do they wish as a future? Because without good employees, the dog and co-op would be nothing. In these times of individuality, where people like things just their way, and in just their time, the co-op runs differently. We plan for how we can help the most people in the best way we can. We plan for a better place to live and we plan for a better community. Your board is committed to make things better for our members and I wish to thank you for the support in this past year. The board and I look forward to serving you into the future. Good evening, my name is Candace Turchinsky and I'm the partner from MNP responsible for the audit of the Dauphin Consumers Cooperative Limited. We'll start with the independent auditor's report. The independent auditor's report is made out to the members of the Dauphin Consumers Cooperative Limited and at the top it includes our audit opinion. That paragraph reads, 
in our opinion, the accompanying financial statements present fairly, in all material respects, the financial position of the cooperative as at its year end, and the results of its operations and its cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with Canadian accounting standards for private enterprises. This is a clean, or an unmodified, or an unqualified audit opinion. From the independent auditor's report, we'll move forward to a review of the balance sheet. Starting in current assets, the cooperative noted an increase in cash and cash equivalents from 167,000 up to 3,392,000. Accounts receivable related to customers decreased slightly down to 2,338,000. Inventories increased slightly to 11,116,000 and prepaid agricultural supplier purchases increased to 5,606,000. This gave an overall increase in current assets from the prior year up from just above 19 million to 24 million and 13,000. Moving on to the longer term assets, the investment related to Federated Cooperatives Limited was up slightly from the prior year to $10,521,000. Property, plant, and equipment decreased due to amortization in the current year from $18 million down to $17,608,000. Overall, total assets increased significantly from $47 million up to $52,268,000 in 2021. Moving on to current liabilities, accounts payable and trust liabilities increased from 7.7 million in 2020 up to 9,447,000 in 2021. Looking at members' equity, there was an increase in both share capital and reserves and retained savings for the year. Share capital increased up to 18,753,000 and reserves and retained savings increased significantly from $16,791,000 to $19,154,000. This resulted in an overall increase in members' equity up to $37,907,000. Moving on to the statement of net savings and retained savings, sales increased year over year from just above $86 million to $86,926,000. Cost of goods sold decreased to $72,542,000, and the gross margin increased year over year to $14,384,000. Also, it increased in percentage up to 16.5%. Expenses relating to operating and administration decreased year over year from 13222000 down to 12280000 This gave a savings from operations in the current year at 2308000 up from a loss from operations in 2020 from 323000 Moving on to the loyalty program and patronage refunds, the FCL loyalty program amount received increased to $1,141,000, and the patronage refund decreased in the current year, down to $1,174,000. This gave a total savings before income taxes, increasing year over year, to $4,624,000. Also in 2021, there was a decrease in the income tax expense, down to $38,000. This resulted in an overall increase in net savings from above $3 million in 2020 to $4,585,000 in 2021. Moving on to the retained savings, the retained savings noted an increase in overall net savings as well as transfers to the statutory reserve, a transfer to the general reserve, and an allocation of patronage to the members increasing from 2020 to 
The next statement notes the statement of cash flows, which gives the operating, investing, and financing activities for the cooperative for the year and includes the cash and cash equivalence changes from 2020 through 2021. From the statements, we move on to the notes to the financial statements. The notes give information on how different items are recorded in the financial statements, as well as specific information around accounts receivable, investments held by the cooperative with Federated Cooperatives Limited, property plant and equipment, long-term debt, income taxes, and information on amounts received by the cooperative from the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy. This concludes the financial statement presentation and the presentation of the Independent Auditor's Report. We would like to thank everyone for joining us in this part of the virtual AGM and wish you all the best in the upcoming year. Welcome everybody to our 81st annual meeting. I'm Lauren Eifert, your general manager. I'd like to thank everybody for attending virtually tonight. It is my honor to report on the 2020 year. In business today, we got to stay relevant, invest in technology, people, and assets for long-term success. We either grow or we die. At Dauphin Co-op, we're committed to long-term sustainable growth, and we have been for over 82 years. The financial reports were just reviewed, and as mentioned earlier in 2020, we had sales of $86.9 million, a 1% increase over 2019 and earnings before tax of $4.6 million. A record year in local earnings and net savings. A very successful year. I love who we are. Our vision to enrich the life of our communities guides everything that we do long term. Our brand promise of locally invested, community minded and lifetime membership benefits truly is what makes co-op a different kind of business and a better business from our competition. Dauphin Co-op is locally invested in the communities we have the privilege of serving. Last year, I reported that over the past several years, we have invested millions of dollars and sales have grown by over 65%. During that time, we continue our commitment to reinvesting back in the profits made by putting it back in our facilities and to you, our members, in equity and cash back. And this past spring, we just paid back over $1.2 million to you, our members. 2020 was an incredible year, one filled with challenges, uncertainties, triumphs, and accomplishments. In accomplishments, we were very honored to be recognized as the Dauphin and District Chamber of Commerce Business of the Year. But the pandemic demonstrated our team leaders and team members are resilient and committed to our vision, mission, and values. Our one team consistently delivered daily on our commitment to our communities by keeping product on the shelves, our locations open, and by working as one team, and even by sharing team members between departments and locations when needed. Our one team proved that Dauphin Co-op is a different kind of business by providing our customers a safe, clean, and positive, stable shopping experience. And I cannot express my gratitude and appreciation enough to all of our team members for doing this. To our communities we serve, our owners and our customers, thank you for your understanding and support during 2020. Thank you to our board of directors for the strategic vision, direction, support and trust in our team to deliver on our vision of enriching the life of our communities. In conclusion, I'm very positive for the future of Dauphin Co-op. As we continue to deal with COVID-19 impacts and uncertainty, we will get through it together. Just as 2020 has proven, Dauphin Co-op is resilient. We're community builders and community leaders. We have been for the past 82 years and we will continue to be. Thank you. Hi, I'm Patty Eilers of the nominating committee. We have three positions that are open and four people that are running. Currently, uh, we have three board members, uh, Brendan Gardner, Dale Seal, and uh, David Swanton, and one new nomination, Ernie Sersky. So therefore, we will hold an election. I make the motion to accept these candidates. Hello, and thank you for having me at tonight's EGM. 
My name is Brendan Gardner, and I've been involved with the Dauphin Co-op Board of Directors since 2018. I grew up in Dauphin and moved to Winnipeg to attend university. While in Winnipeg, I worked at an international accounting firm and gained invaluable cross-industry experience. In 2008, I moved back to Dauphin when I finished my CGA designation. In 2008, I bought into the partnership of Love and Pearson Group to apply my skills within the financial services industry. As mentioned, I am grateful to have had the opportunity to sit on the co-op board since 2018. I've really enjoyed my experience on the board and involvement to many projects and successes that the Dauphin Co-op has experienced. The current board is very amicable and thus allows for efficient meetings and open conversation, not to mention the experience from different professionals and sectors of the economy. The Co-op is an important organization in the communities of Dauphin, St. Rose and surrounding areas. I feel that my accounting background and business acumen would continue to be an asset to the board, continuing to move forward in a strong and financially viable manner. I'm excited and honored to be considered for a position on the Co-op Board of Directors. In joining the board, it is my desire to advance and promote the Co-op to succeed in meeting its annual goals and objectives while continuing to successfully navigate through an ever-changing environment. Thank you very much. Good evening, members. I'm Dale Seal, husband of Angie Seal and father to four mostly grown kids. I was raised in a co-op family on a farm south of Dauphin. I've been a local small business owner for the last nine years. I'm grateful for having been elected to serve for the past three years as, as one of the, the board directors of the Dauphin Co-op. Over those three years, I've learned about the co-op retail system, federated co-op, and how our board functions, some strengths, growth areas of our local co-op, and other things as well. I've participated in two federated annual general meetings and reported back to membership on behalf of the board. I've completed all the co-op online director training courses that I'm eligible for. I've served on our nominating committee and have attended and participated in almost all of our regular monthly meetings. Supporting local business, including co-op, the credit union, Westman Communications, the Chamber of Commerce, along with local initiatives such as youth sports, community groups, volunteerism and schools, become more important to me as I see and experience more of how those entities that exist because of our community, they make our area a better place to live. It was an honor to participate with our board and with others to articulate this idea in our mission statement that Dauphin Co-op's purpose is enriching the lives of our community. My family has noticed my commitment to purchase from the Co-op when possible and to support other co-ops, including the Credit Union and Westman Cable. And I've encouraged my adult children to become co-op members when they lived in Brandon and made a bigger effort to buy fuel from co-op when traveling. Increasing the amount of business I do with these groups is not all about my commitment to them. It is also about their commitment to me. As, of, as I have increased purchasing from the co-op, I found that there is a high standard of service provided because there is a commitment to providing members and non-members with service that goes above and beyond what is required. Service with excellence, honesty, respect are common throughout the co-op retail system. This high level of service does indeed enrich the quality of my life and the life in the parkland. If elected to another term on the board, I will continue to serve our membership to the best of my ability. Thank you for considering voting for me. Good evening, fellow members, Mr. Chairman, directors, and guests of Dauphin Consumers Co-op. My name is Ernie Sersky, and I have decided to put my name forward for director of Dauphin Consumers Co-op. I have served in this capacity in the past and did consider running last year, but decided the time was not right for me. Now I could stand in front of you and tell you about the organizations and businesses I've been involved in over the years. I could tell you that I've been part of the community, 
provincial and national organizations, both public and private, farmer-driven and shareholder-driven. I choose not to do that. I think most of you who are here today know enough of me that that is not necessary. What I want to say to you today is this. If you are happy with the way our co-op is doing today, vote for the three incumbents that are here today. If you are satisfied that this co-op has reached the very top level of success that it is able to, vote for these three capable incumbents. If, however, you want someone who will stand up and be counted, someone who is a visionary and has the experience in board governance, then I ask you to vote for me. Any business that chooses to be part of a community must earn that community's trust. That trust should be that it is providing value to its customers. Part of that value is to ensure profitability, because without profits, there is no ability to pay taxes, community donations, and most importantly, wages. If I am elected today, I assure you I will use the experience I have gained over the years to provide the board and management my best opinion on profitability and business decisions. I can and assure you, as the states in the Manitoba Cooperative Associations Act, that I will act honestly, in good faith, with the view of the best interest of the cooperative. If you share my vision for this co-op, I humbly ask for your support. Thank you. Good evening, members of Dauphin Consumers Co-op. My name is David Swanton. I've been on the board for just over 20 years, and I'm currently Vice President of the Board of Directors. I grain farm just north of Dauphin with my wife Tanya and my two sons, Lane and Kyler. I've been on this board a long time, long enough to have grown passionate for all aspects of this business. Our mission statement, we make a difference by building value, valued relationships with our members, team members and communities, one interaction at a time is so true. The new statement was updated just a couple years ago, but it comes from the roots. Starting from the recovery from the 80s and the passion that Eric Irwin, Nestor, and Chris and all of the board members at that time had to keep this co-op alive. We are no longer alive, but we are thriving. We are no longer just alive, but we are thriving. Even with many challenges over the years, like droughts, floods, early snowfalls, BSE, a large community employer closing its doors, and even a pandemic, which is creating a supply chain issue worldwide. In 2020, on the federated level, profit, profitability was a challenge. On a Dauphin Co-op level, 2020 was the first time ever all departments were profitable. Locally, with, 100, or with $87 million in sales. When I got on the board in 2001, sales were $27 million. I have a strong desire to keep my chair at this board with this very well-rounded group of rep that re represents you, the members. We have local business owners, a town councillor, a financial advisor, a lawyer, farmers, experience in the building industry, and, an exper and experience in the food industry, all sitting at this table. I want to remain a part of this team so I can do my part in responsible growth and keep your Dauphin Consumers Co-op growing and thriving into the future. Thank you very much. members, guests, staff, I mo motion to appoint Myers Norris Penny as external auditors and FCL as internal auditors. Thank you.